We can apply creativity in every aspect of life. Start before you're ready. How do we inject more purposeful creativity into our life? A simple habit, you would be blown away how, how much results you can get in just doing that. Link there in the house. If you guys don't know Josh yet, he is, or he has been the CEO of five different tech companies, which sold for over $200 million. He's helped start up over 100 different startups. He's a New York Times bestselling author. And he's got a new book out, which, which I don't think is out yet, but it's on its way because I don't have my copy yet. So I'm excited to, to pick it up called Big Little Breakthroughs. And you can see on his background there, the copy of his super colorful rainbow. Josh Lintner, welcome aboard, man. Evan, thanks so much. I'm a huge fan of yours and I love the work that you do. You're always sharing great wisdom and insights for people. So thank you so much. And it's truly a pleasure to be with you. Cool. Well, I mean, we haven't, so I haven't read the book yet, but I love the concept of it. And at least for me in a nutshell, it's you don't have to have some big giant breakthrough all the time. A lot of the pressure that we put on ourselves, if we have to come up with the next Nobel Prize winning idea, a lot of the breakthroughs come from making little tiny but constant incremental improvements. Is that the thesis? Did I get it correct? Yeah, that, that's pretty close. So, so it's big little breakthroughs, how small everyday innovations drive oversized results. And the whole notion is, instead of taking on this massive risk or trying to shoot for a billion dollar idea, which might be out of the grasp of many of us, it's around cultivating small daily acts of creativity in a really sort of, rig, not, not really, but like a logical way. And what this does, it makes creativity way less risky, way more accessible to more people, and allows us to actually build skills and enjoy great results all at the same time. So it's sort of a more pragmatic way, actually, of building and harnessing human creativity to drive the outcomes that we care about the most. I love it. And, and my audience is more entrepreneurs, less like corporate, but entrepreneurs. And I think it, a lot of entrepreneurs don't start because they're working on too big of an idea. And it's three years later and they still haven't done the thing because it's too big and now they need venture capital. And now they need this giant team as opposed to just starting something, making tweaks, making changes, not worrying about the perfect plan. And so I love that message. How do you think it applies best to the entrepreneurial market? Yeah, so being a venture capital investor for years and years, there's an old saying in VC land that uh, more startups die of, of indigestion than starvation. In other words, they try to take on too much. And I think that the notion of big little breakthroughs is a really sort of thoughtful, pragmatic approach here. One of the principles, so, so just back it up for a second, in, in, this is my fourth book, but I, I poured my heart and soul into this one, man. I spent over a thousand hours in research and interviews with CEOs, billionaires, celebrity entrepreneurs, Grammy award-winning artists, as well as everyday innovators around the world. And I tried to sort of decode, like, how do they think? What do they do every day? How do they build habits around creativity? And what are their core mindsets and obsessions? And in the book, we covered the eight core obsessions of everyday innovators. But one of them you hit right on the head of it, which is start before you're ready. In other words, too many of us wait for a directive or permission or sure we have like a bulletproof game plan and we end up missing an opportunity if we even start at all. But to the entrepreneurial question, it's more about getting after it. And yeah, you may have to move forward in the face of ambiguity. You might not have all the answers. You might need to pivot and adapt and course correct along the way, but it's more about getting started and finding your way forward using acts of everyday creativity at each step of the way. I love it. When does the book drop? One week from today, it's on 420. For anyone that celebrates 420, I hope that you, you know, blaze up, have some Cheetos and enjoy the book. I love it. Um, so the idea is super interesting to me because I have a picture of Kanye West behind me on the wall. And the very first top 10 rules video I ever did on my YouTube channel was Kanye West because one of my friends uh, put out a blog post kind of slamming Kanye West. And so I thought, you know what? Kanye needs a little more love. Like you can hate on him all you want, but you can learn from him too. You know, there's a lot you can learn from him. So I threw away what I was doing on the day. I had something else planned just to make this one video, just to show my friend Mark. And people loved it so much that it became, hey, can you do Jeff Bezos? And can you do Dame Dash? And so it, it essentially built the brand by having just this one little idea that I was doing just to show my friend Mark. And I was going to go back to kind of the rest of my day. And it took me in a whole different path that I wasn't expecting. So I love I love that idea is that in those in those ideas that you've got, it doesn't have to be some big thing, but it could become it and you won't know until you actually start doing it. Well, I love your story because talk about a big little breakthrough. I mean, if, if, if you were years and years ago said, okay, I want to build this like media empire and have millions of YouTube followers and everybody knows me and I get to hang out with Gary Vee and such, like that would have been such a big thing. You wouldn't even know what to do. 
but you're like, okay, I have an idea. I'm going to compilate the insights from Kanye West. And then you did Bezos and it started to build on itself. And so that is much more often the way innovation and success occurs. It's not waiting around for the perfect lightning bolt of inspiration from the heavens. It's more about getting after it, experimenting along the way, tweaking and adapting, and ultimately using your creativity like on a daily basis to forge ahead and ultimately win as you have. How much, how much is non-judgment around the ideas important? Like, I didn't expect that to be some huge thing. I thought it would just be a one-off that was actually a waste of time, but I just cared about my friend Mark, so we did it. But I've had a lot of other things that I've tested that just never go anywhere, too, but I'm not attached, like, this has to be the next idea. Well, there's two core principles in the book I just want to touch on. Uh, so by the way, the first half of the book is you know, heavy into neuroscience and research. And there's really, it's not like boring research, it's fun, but you know, really it, it, it communicates that we all as human beings can be creative. Like every one of us living, breathing are hardwired to be creative. That's our natural state. But anyway, the back half of the book are these core eight, eight big ideas. One of them is called fall seven times stand eight, which is a Zen, I borrowed the term from a Zen proverb, but it's the notion of recognizing that setbacks and mistakes are part of the process. You're never gonna end up with good ideas unless you have a tolerance for some bad ones along the way. And it's not just dogged persistence, but it's rather the creative resilience. It's like using creativity with resilience. So when you have those inevitable setbacks, you're able to overcome them. But, but the other thing that kind of brought, brought to mind is uh, one of the other principles is called open a test kitchen. So as you probably know, many food companies have a test kitchen where they get to like tinker and play with different food things before serving it to real customers. Instead of thinking of innovation or idea, big breakthroughs as like, hey, I'm just gonna try something and, and, and bite my lip and hope it doesn't you know, burn the company down. It's a notion of testing lots of little things. It's that constant experimentation mindset, recognizing that many experiments won't work out. And the ones that do, you just double the size of those, double the size of those. So instead of like these wild high risk swings, it's a much easier, more accessible way to pursue greatness, really. Lots of little experiments as you did. Some worked out well, some didn't. You doubled down on the ones that worked, discarded the ones that didn't. Yeah, so there was a song by Shania Twain, the country, I'm Canadian, she's Canadian. I'm not that big a country fan, but uh, no one needs to know. And I put that song on my Instagram and nobody knew what that song was. And it just upset me that nobody knew what the song was. So the rest of the day became dedicated to Shania Twain. Everybody needs to know this song. And I challenged people to a Shania Twain dance challenge where I'd be DMing people for the whole day like, hey, dance to this song and I'll share it to my Instagram. And that became the whole day. And we turned into a YouTube video and everything else. Uh, and people had so much fun with it. And they asked, well, when's the next dance challenge coming on? And I thought, that's it. Like, there is no next challenge. I don't want to be the dance challenge guy. But it was it was a moment in time that was super fun to do. And I think just that message to entrepreneurs that, hey, follow your curiosity, try it out, see how it goes. It may hit, it may not. And stop judging your idea that it has to be so perfect. And just get it out the gate and see what happens with it. Yeah, that's so smart. And, and you know, the other thing I love about that story is that you're bringing this element of fun to the equation. Mm. You ever notice like when we were kids, we, we played, we went out to play, you play sports, I play music, but then you go to work and work is like this horrible thing where you're trading your soul for money. It's almost like if you enjoy it, you shouldn't be doing it. And, and I think it's the opposite. What if we just swapped out the word Evan work and play? Like instead of having a workforce, what if you had a play force? What about like work playing through your problems instead of working through your problems? Or like, bye honey, I'm going out to play for the day. But, but when you think about play, you add fun, you add it, that, that sparks creativity. And I would argue that the, you, your best ideas probably came in those moments where you let your guard down a little bit and had some fun. Yeah, people ask about work-life balance. I'm like, well, what, what is work? Like, I'm talking to Josh, is this work? Is this, this is fun. I mean, I'm gonna leave this with more energy than when I came in. It, I'm looking at my calendar and it's not like, oh my God, I gotta talk to Josh. Even though it's like work hours, it's all life. It's all fun. I think that's why you become an entrepreneur is you get to create the, your own life that you want, ideally. And it's not every day's roses and amazing, but, but that idea that, hey, you can go create your own big, big little breakthrough for your whole life as well, not just for a business concept. Well, that, that's so true. And, you know, as entrepreneurs, again, I, I built five companies with my bare hands, so I know what that's like. And, and we, we're always like looking for that edge. We're trying to achieve more. We're trying to win more. And I would argue that many of the hard advantages of the past have become commoditized or outsourced or automated. So in this sort of new era, in the post-COVID era, how do we build startups? How do we win as, as people and our families and our health, our careers, et cetera? And I would argue the one thing that can't be outsourced or automated is our inherent gift of creativity. 
And if we can bring that to bear on the things that we care about the most, whether it's landing the Jones account or whether it's you know raising the next round of capital or, or getting just that perfect CFO to join your team, the more creative we are in all aspects of our professional lives, not just product or marketing, in all aspects, the more sustainable results we'll enjoy. The book is called Big Little Breakthrough, uh, Breakthroughs, Josh Linkner. Where do you want people to get it? Like, we'll link this up on YouTube description below. Is it Amazon? Is it your website? Where do you want people to go? Well, wherever you choose to buy books is cool with me. But if you go to biglittlebreakthroughs.com, there's all kinds of goodies. There's like a free assessment tool. See how you're weighing in right now on creativity. There's downloadable worksheets. There's a fast start guide. So that, that's probably a pretty convenient place to go. I will say if anyone enjoys uh, listening to books, I not only read the book myself, which most authors do, but I, I started my career playing jazz guitar. So I spiced it up a little bit. I put a little jazz guitar in between each chapter and at the beginning and the end of the audio recording. So there's a little music involved in the book as well. Not too much, I, a little bit. That's epic. I love that, man. That's <laughs> great. Um, and that's another big little breakthrough. Like I've never, I've, I've interviewed tons of authors. I've never heard anybody put their own little jazz solo in between the chapters. I love that. Um, speaking about fun and creativity, you know, I don't have the book yet, but I love the color, uh, the cover of it. Anybody, you can see behind him over his right shoulder, you know, the cover design. I almost want to have that, you know, hanging on my on my shelf just as like a creative reminder, just as something there to it's it's, you know, rainbows and creativity. Like, talk to me about how you came up with that cover. Well, first of all, Evan, we're going to absolutely get you a copy of the book. So it will be in your physical possession the day it comes out, I promise you. Um, but it's it's a little hard to see through Instagram Live here, but what that the cover actually is, do you ever see uh, uh, an art form called pointillism, where it's one little dot and like another little dot, and they're just primary colors, and it's not real fancy or hard to do, like my four-year-old daughter, Dot Talia, could put a little dot there. But when you add these little dots together in an organized way, it forms something special. And that's exactly what big little breakthroughs are. The individual acts don't have to be that complex or inspired or great or awesome. But when you keep putting them there and you organize them in a smart way, they form something greater. Uh, one of the, I opened the book with, with, there's only really one quote in the book. It's not like a whole collection of quotes, but it's a Vincent Van Gogh quote that, that all great things are simply a compilation of smaller things. And that's exactly what Big Little Breakthroughs is all about, is coming up with those you know, high consistency habits of little dots that add up to big things. And that's what the cover represents. I love it. So someone in the chat saying, hey, I need to hear this, feeling quite frustrated myself today. For somebody who is trying to figure out their, their next big idea and is being hard on themselves and super frustrated that they don't have it and they see all these other people winning and why am I not winning and what's my next idea? I'm so frustrated. What advice would you give them? Well, first of all, I think we all feel that way sometimes. I think it's one of the downsides of social media is that we glamorize this unrealistic definition of success. But again, I've spoken to many you know, multi-billionaires that have had lousy days and felt bad. So just first of all, let's acknowledge that we all have that feeling. We all have fear and anxiety and, and all that. It's totally normal. But, but once you do, I think it's overwhelming if you're like, hey, how come I didn't just invent Amazon? How come I'm not Mark Zuckerberg? Very few of us are. It's hard to see ourselves in that. But when we think about little breakthroughs, it's so much more accessible. We're like, gosh, I could, I could come up with that. It's funny, in the book, I, cover, I don't cover the stories of Netflix and Amazon and Apple because we already know that. I cover the stories of these really interesting people you've never heard of that have done amazing things. And to me, that's so much cooler because it's, like that, that, it's sort of like innovation for the rest of us. And I really feel like, personally, I'm on a mission to help everyday people become everyday innovators. So to the question, I would say this. Don't worry about think it big for a minute, think small. Think the next time you're facing a challenge, what's one teeny tiny micro way that you can inject a little creativity? It doesn't have to be bold or breakthrough. But what ends up happening is that these ideas, big little breakthroughs, they become contagious. So one becomes six, becomes 14, and then you start to like build a rhythm around it. So for me, what I do when I'm laying on the canvas, battered and bloodied, is I just try one little thing, and then try one little thing after that. And, and a series of those little things, again, adds up to much greater results. So let's apply this even to our, our daily lives. If somebody is you know, coming through COVID, maybe they gained some extra weight, maybe they're not happy with you know, how they've taken care of their body and eating and all that. So if somebody's like gained an extra 15 pounds and they want to get it off, how do we apply big little breakthroughs to that? Well, I'm certainly not a nutrition or you know, exercise expert, but, but you probably know that, that exercise, it's all about consistency. You know, you can go to the gym if you're 40 pounds overweight and work really hard for three hours and you don't drop 20 pounds instantly. It's the series, it's the consistency. And that's exactly kind of like the principle behind uh, big little breakthroughs. I will say this, because you mentioned COVID. I feel like with COVID, the whole world has hit a giant reset button and patterns have been broken. 
the way we work, the way we sell, the way we buy, the way we live, love, eat, et cetera. And I think for entrepreneurs, I know you have a lot of entrepreneurs today, this is a real opportunity because the established guard, their, their patterns are broken just like ours as entrepreneurs. And that's the opportunity. So we can't, rather than relying on what worked in the past, we have to forge new ground. We have to, we have to reimagine and reinvent and rethink. And that's, again, I think the real opportunity that we all have. So I think you just tackle the weight, that, you know, a little bit overweight from COVID, from drinking and eating too much like I did, the same way that you would tackle a big creative project is sort of one little teeny step at a time. Yeah, I think I, why I brought it up is because I think your book applies not just to innovation in business, but innovation in your entire life. And I think that's what entrepreneurs love doing is we get to set the rules for our own life. And so a lot of people over plan on their health and their fitness. What's the perfect diet and what's the perfect routine and what's the per and then you don't do anything, right? So big little breakthrough. Hey, what's what's Go for a walk today. Like, just start building some momentum. Do anything. Like, one small thing. Will you lose all the way from one walk? No. But do you start building momentum? Yes. Right? It's just that first step is what's so critical. Um, I really totally agree with you. And, you know, it's funny. I, I kind of collect big little breakthroughs. People send me stuff all the time. And, and here's a couple examples because we really haven't talked about examples. So, you know, how do you cool a glass of white wine? I've always wondered this because you, you don't want to put it in the refrigerator too long because you want to drink it now. You can't put ice cubes in it. It dilutes it. You know how you do it? Frozen grapes. Boom, big little breakthrough in action. Wine tastes great, cools it right off. So, I mean, the point is that we can apply creativity in every aspect of life. And one of the stories that I covered in the book is a guy named Frank Serrano. So Frank, he lives in St. Louis. He had a pothole appear outside of his house. So he diligently calls the, the road commission, complains they do nothing. So he sends an email and he goes on social media and, and months go by, they do nothing. So finally he decided, let's, let's do something creative. So on the third month anniversary of this pothole's existence, he places a piece of birthday cake on it, lights a three candle for his three month, sends it happy birthday, films it, releases that on social media, people chuckle, it bounces around, gets to the road commission, pothole is fixed in 24 hours. So my only point here is that we don't have to only apply this if we're like trying to raise a C, level, C round of, of capital for $40 million. We can apply it in our health, in our friends, in our family, even in our roads up outside our houses. I love it. Someone in chat is asking, what inspired you to write the book? And obviously, you've had so much success as an entrepreneur, uh, starting your own businesses, investing in other companies. You've already had a New York Times bestselling book. Uh, you put a thousand plus hours into this. You don't make a lot of money from writing books. So what inspired you to do this versus start another company? Yeah, no, thank you for asking. That's very, very kind. Uh, so first of all, I grew up in this, I, I'm from the city of Detroit. So I kind of grew up as being an underdog. And I love the way that this type of thinking can level the playing field. You know, you don't, it, it, innovation, I'm sick and tired of people thinking of it as this exclusive club that only, you know, elite people get to join. It really is, is like innovation for the rest of us. So I wanted to make this accessible to every person on the planet to like help them unleash dormant creative capacity. Uh, as mentioned, I feel like I'm on this mission to help everyday people become everyday innovators. Think about this, Evan. Think about how high leverage of an activity it is to just bring a little more creativity to the world. In other words, you don't have to be a thousand percent more creative. What if you were 5% more creative? And so I started thinking about this, like, okay, what if our school systems were 5% more creative? We could have massive gains in educational outcomes. What if our planet was 5% more creative? Think about the environmental impact. Think about the impact on public safety and health and business and careers and family and community. So I just started thinking that if there are all these people walking around the planet with dormant creative capacity, and I could help them unlock even a little bit the world is a better place. And I, I'm, I'm so excited about the book. Honestly, commercial success is, is less important to me than on the book. I just want people to embrace it because I really believe in my soul that this is going to make the world a better place. How do we inject more purposeful creativity into our life? I say that because most people, I think, have a, have a routine and it's just kind of the same thing, wake up and same thing, wake up and same thing. What's a big little breakthrough that people can inject into their daily routine? Yeah, so I really actually covered, there's a whole chapter in the book about habits. I study the habits of people like Lady Gaga and Lynn manuel Miranda and, and Steven Spielberg and, and sort of decode that. I even share my own uh, habits. I do a five minute a day creativity warm up. Five minutes, that's it. And I can just walk you through real quickly. One of the things I do is I guzzle the creative inputs of others. They always say in software engineering, if you want to change the outputs, you got to change the inputs. So I literally spend one minute a day. I might watch a, a live jazz performance on YouTube. I might stare at a beautiful painting or read a poem out loud, just sort of bathe in other people's creativity. One other thing I do is I give myself like creativity jumping jacks. I give myself some weird problem. Like if I had to market a replacement for the, for the head earbuds, 
and, and I had to do it in a different language, what would I do? And it's not, to, it's not designed to, to kick out real work product. It's more designed to keep my juices flowing. So a simple habit, you would be blown away how, how much results you can get in just doing that. The other thing I'll share real quickly is that uh, most of us use a technology for idea extraction called brainstorming. Brainstorming was a technology that was invented in 1958. And I'm sorry, a lot has changed since 1958, but we're still using the same outdated, ineffective technology. So over the last 20 years, and I share a lot in the book and also online, I built a toolkit of far better technology. When, so when you, you, it's time to get creative, how can you extract your, your natural abilities? They're funny names and they're really fun. One of them is called the bad idea brainstorm, where you start by brainstorming bad ideas, only then to pivot them into good ideas. One of them is called role storming, where you're brainstorming in character. So you might pretend that you're uh, a villain or a hero or a movie star or a super athlete, and you pretend that you're them while brainstorming. Um, there, there's a whole bunch of really fun techniques, but the uh, techniques are not only fun, but they're way more impactful. They're, think about it as better technology to get our innate creativity deployed and into action. I love it. I mean, I think even just changing up your environment, just walk to the coffee shop a different way than you normally walk, right? Like something simple like that. Maybe you notice something different, like, oh, that bird is singing and that launches your next big little breakthrough. Um, I love it. For that, I love the little, the first tip. I mean, I love all your tips. So the first one you gave about you watch a YouTube video and it's, it's you know, jazz guitar. It's just something to kind of break you out. Do you... Do you plan that? Do you have like a playlist you create before? Because a lot of people then like, oh, what am I going to do to get inspired? And then they, they spend 40 minutes just searching on YouTube <laughs> instead of actually having a thing. So to the, to the idea of, hey, have your running shoes out before you go for a run, like put them there the, the night before. Are you curating a playlist or do you have a book next to you ready to go the night before so that it, it forces that creativity habit the next day? I do both. And I think the, the key here is that people should do what feels right to them. There's not a prescription per se. Just having a deliberate small amount of practice every day is going to, you'll be blown away after 30 days how much more creative you feel. The, the, the cool thing about creativity, Evan, is that it's not like you're learning a new language from scratch. It doesn't require, you know, five years and millions of dollars and all this sacrifice. Because we're hardwired to be creative, a little bit of practice can actually just completely unlock people's creativity. And technique is the same thing. So yeah, sometimes I will set out like the, the running shoes the night before kind of thing where I have, oh, here's what I'm going to work on tomorrow. Here's a couple challenges or here's some songs I want to listen to. But other times it's not that complicated. I'll just literally go to YouTube and I'm like, huh, bossa nova saxophone. And I just like watch somebody well. And, and so it doesn't, I don't think we need to overthink it. I think it's more about a matter of just like getting your juices going and keeping it consistent. There's one other quick thing I just want to share because it's amazing how technology, I call it technology. I hate the term brainstorming. It's like so just fingernails on a blackboard to me. I like idea jamming better. But anyway, check this out. So this technology I was talking about called uh, role storming. Let's say we're in a meeting and there's five of us and you come up with a bad, uh, with a good idea. Well, the other four of us all of a sudden become the instantly appointed idea police and tell you all the reasons that the idea is not going to work. And that's just how it works. And so what happens in most brainstorming sessions is people share their safe ideas, but they hold their crazy, cool, big ones back because they don't want to look foolish or they don't want to offend somebody. Anyway, role storming removes the fear because fear and creativity cannot coexist. So in role storming, Evan, let's say you're playing the role of Steve Jobs. No one's going to laugh at Steve for coming up with a big idea. They might laugh at Steve for coming up with a small one. So now you, AKA Steve, right there on your wall, you're totally liberated. Like you can say anything you want, no fear whatsoever. So real quickly, I just did this with a group of, of executives one time at Sony Japan. I met this guy, he was the stiffest human being I've ever met, like dark suit, white shirt, tight, like stiff as a board. Anyway, we got him role storming as Yoda. And I have never seen personal transformation like this. This dude's jacket's off, his tie's undone, he's like leaping around the room and the whiteboards were filled with ideas. So here's a guy who would not identify himself as a creative person, gave him a little bit of permission, gave him a new role, and he, he was unshackled. I, I didn't teach him to be creative. He had that inside him all along. So the cool thing, again, is that we all have that inside of us. I just try to help people extract it. I love that. One of the things I love doing with my son is have a have put, put him in charge. Like, he's the adult for the next hour, and we'll do whatever you want to do. <laughs> awesome. This is the crazy things it comes up with. And, and just to that that question, that point, are there activities that you can do or that are in the book that you can do with somebody else, whether that's your spouse, your kids, your your business partners, a friend, like, so you're bouncing, you're having the idea, I forget what you said, but like the, the idea of with somebody or the creativity with somebody else, are there activities or what would you recommend? 
Yeah, there's a lot of that. So, so again, my background is originally before doing tech startups was a jazz musician. And jazz, whether you like listening to it or not, is that it's like this spontaneous art form. You, we could play it together every night, every, the same song. It's always different every night. It's like we're a conversation. It's unscripted. But in jazz, it's not what, what happens is this, this co-creation process. In other words, I might play something on guitar. And let's say it's not even that good. But the bass player hears a little something and picks up on it. And then the drummer grabs the rhythm on the cymbal. And then you on the saxophone pick up on that and well, well a solo to the delight of the crowd. But you'd say like, well, who invented that? Who created it? It was really a co-creation process. It was collaborative. And so creativity can sometimes be the lone artist in, in their log cabin writing the great American novel, but it's better, I believe, when it, there's collaboration and you're riffing off of one another. So yeah, in the book, I actually share a few techniques from the world of music, as well as the world of business to help nurture that collaborative creative process. I love it. Well, well Josh, I could talk to you all day, man. Um... Guys, go pick up the book, Big Little Breakthroughs. YouTube will link that up in the description below. I'm getting my coffee, my copy and my coffee together. <laughs> Inspire more creativity. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on. Best of luck on the book and can't wait to see this one become a New York Times bestseller as well. Thanks so much, brother. Really a pleasure to be with you. And I'm sending you a book today. All right. I love it. Much love, everybody. Thank you, Josh. Cheers. If you want to get even more amazing ideas, check out the one-on-one -on -one I did with James Altucher right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. I didn't really have the skill enough to, um, to write the book. Experiments lead to other experiments, lead to successes you couldn't even imagine possible when you first did the experiment.